Over the past year and a half, this tiny yet very powerful combustion cannon has evolved from a small potato launcher into what you see here, a refined cannon capable of firing breakaway darts at over 500 kilometers per hour. The last video with this cannon, I ended up creating ammo made from ice, which after getting fired, ended up completely disappearing and melting away. That video led to so many more comments that were suggesting completely different types of ammo instead of only focusing on the upgrades which could make this better. A big inspiration for these darts came from the blowgun video Grant Thompson made on the King of Random, and around the same time he made another video making exploding darts. In that video, he took one of these exploding caps and put it on the end of the dart, but the only issue for me is one of these caps is almost bigger than the entire barrel on the cannon. These caps don't have any real significant power and they mainly just create a loud pop sound. I've been trying to find a better option to make consistent ammo for this cannon which can also perform in different ways. So I bought a 3D printer and after getting the printer set up I noticed that I've received so many comments from all of you saying I should upgrade the cannon with a completely redesigned 3D printed body. Right now the handle is part of a bug zapper that I took apart for the ignition system in the cannon. Now this works, but it is far from a clean or even intentional design. Another thing I don't like is the large battery pack on the side of the handle. On top of that, there's a noticeable delay between pushing the button and the actual spark which makes timing inconsistent and unreliable. I think I've found a solution to all of these issues and it's inside of this small device. This is an electric lighter and it has two wires which create a powerful arc between them. The electric arc at the end is consistent and also instant. What makes it perfect for this project is everything is contained in a slim housing, allowing me to integrate everything cleanly into a custom 3D printed handle. So I spent around 10 hours learning to create 3D models on a free app called Shaper 3D, only to find out I need to pay $50 a month just to export my file in a high enough resolution for good printing results. Why was the app even free in the first place? So I switched over to Blender and started from scratch. After learning the basics, which was not very basic, I started designing the new handle for the Canon, a version that that finally combines high performance with a clean design. As I was using Blender, I was going on so many different websites for tutorials, downloading other 3D models, and even just random references, and that reminded me exactly why I'm using Surfshark VPN. It seems like anytime you search something even a little bit specific, you always end up on these strange corners of the internet. I'm talking about websites with three different fonts, ads that just don't even line up, and a loading bar that feels like it's powered by coal. Surfshark encrypts everything I'm doing online, so at least I know none of that mess is being tracked or collected while I'm digging for information. Not only does Surfshark do all that, but it also helps you save money. Let me explain. When you have Surfshark, it lets you change your virtual location. This can lower prices on flights, tools, or even software for projects like this. Surfshark works on unlimited devices, so you can put it on everything you have and not think about it. If you want privacy online, better prices, and just a little peace of mind when navigating websites probably old enough to vote, Surfshark has you covered. You can try this out yourself by going to surfshark.com slash Gryption or use code Gryption at the checkout to get an extra four months added to your plan. I put a link at the top of the description and there's also a pinned comment. Thank you Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Once I had a base model created, I disassembled the electric lighter and used a caliper to measure every component I needed to expose in the handle. Once everything aligned, I exported the file and started printing the first prototype. After printing the handle, I removed the supports and I was left with a clean 3D printed handle that fits the exposed parts of the lighter. The chamber for this project is made from one of these small flashlights and after sealing the end with JB Weld Putty to eliminate air leaks, it slides perfectly into the printed handle. I also added these small cutouts where the chamber attaches to the handle so the wires from the lighter can go directly into the chamber for a much cleaner look. I also soldered a button to the lighter to make it easier to press. I also had to change the cutout in the handle to fit the new button. Now with the fully redesigned handle complete, it's time to move to the next phase, developing a new type of ammo. As I mentioned, the original barrel is very small, which works great for the high speed darts, but it makes it very difficult to accommodate for anything bigger like an impact sensitive ammo. To address that, I bought a 7mm barrel, which is a noticeable change from the previous one, which was only 4.5mm. Something I find really cool is that the barrels are able to screw onto the same chamber, allowing you to test different types of ammo just from swapping the barrel. 
with the upgraded barrel size, I was able to start designing a new type of ammo to be fired from it. I ended up designing a small shell which would be able to hold an impact sensitive powder and this would also be able to be 3D printed. I added these fins with a slight curve which should make the casing spin. After spending multiple hours designing the shell, I settled for a two-part casing that has a removable tip. Once I had this model created, I started printing the first prototype. I also made a small change to the handle, making it a little bit longer, and now it feels a lot better to hold. I'm actually very surprised with how well the shell is printed, considering how small they are. Before I load these with powder, I want to see how well they fire without any weight. And this will also be the first test with the new cannon. You might remember when I swapped the barbecue igniter for the bug zapper spark, the cannon had significantly more power. And that was because the fuel lit faster because of the bigger spark. The bug zapper did make a big improvement in power, but now I'm wondering how the new system will compare. I'm going to fire the new printed ammo out of both the cannons and use a chronograph to see the exact speed. As I kind of expected, the results between the two cannons were very similar. One issue I noticed was the ammo didn't want to fly straight even with the fins on the side. I'm guessing this is because the fins actually make the ammo slightly back heavy, causing it to switch directions in the air. Even if the ammo hit straight, I'm not fully convinced the impact would cause the powder to explode with how thick the tip is. I went back to Blender and redesigned a new cone that has a small hole in the end, and this will make a lot more sense once we fill the shell with powder. So, there's a few options for making the ammo impact sensitive. I'm gonna make a simple flash powder using some matches. That's basically the same stuff that's in one of these. I'm not gonna go into detail how to make this stuff, but there's lots of videos on YouTube that explain how it's done. Although match powder is very flammable, it's not actually impact sensitive and that is a good thing. The match powder doesn't become impact sensitive until I add another chemical that I'm actually not going to mention in the video. Now that the shell is filled with powder, this is why the tip has a small hole. If I put something like a small nail on the tip of the cone, not only is all the weight now in the front of the ammo, but once this hits something, the nail will push directly into the powder causing it to explode. The dart needs to hit something hard, so I'm going to shoot it up against that rock. After only a couple shots, I looked back at the footage and noticed only about half the powder was actually going off. When this hit the rock, I saw a little bit of match powder that wasn't detonated. So I went back and made the match powder ratio a little bit different, and this had so much more power. Alright, the nail is working pretty well. I want to try hitting some other objects, but I'm unsure if the nail will be able to push into the powder if it's not hitting anything hard. I tried hitting fruit a few times and nothing really happened. I'm going to try swapping the nail for a cap and hopefully when the cap goes off, it'll set off the rest of the powder. Okay, so the apple just disappeared. On camera, it's so hard to explain how loud these are. Even if this hits something about 20 feet away, my ears ring. I cannot believe what these are capable of. This one is empty because I'm not holding this without gloves. Everything you saw here was very controlled with precautions in place, so don't recreate any of this. If you have more ideas for this project, leave a comment down below. You can also join the free Discord down below where you can talk to me and other members to go deeper with these types of projects. Remember, you can get four extra months of Surfshark using the link down below or use code Gription at the checkout. I appreciate all the support and I will see you in my next video.